replace your rear tire, you will need an adjustable wrench, some pliers, tire irons to get the tire off your rim, you can also use two, a towel, an old rag to rub wipe grease off your fingers and dirt, some duct tape to renew your seal around your spokes, a screwdriver to help you apply your um, calipers apart so that it'll help you get your tire back on, some gloves to protect you from scratches while you're taking the tire off your rim, some rubber gloves to help you apply grease, some baby powder to lube your tube inside your rim, you can also use grease, I've seen it in the video, we'll be using a valve stem remover, it'll remove the valve stem so that your air will be released faster, we'll be using a 13mm wrench, a 12mm wrench, and a 10mm wrench, and these will be used to adjust your chain adjusters, so the little block in the, your rear swing arm. A rubber mallet to help you get your axle out. It'll also help you apply the tire around the rim nicer. Some soapy water to help you get the new tire and the old tire off your rim. And don't forget your owner's manual. The first step of this video is to put your new tires into the sun. I recommend that you wash your dirt bike before taking things apart so that no dirt gets into areas where it shouldn't go. Step 2, take out your axle poles. Your next step will be to take your screwdriver and pry this part out. It's a bit hard to get out because of all the dirt. There you go. If you're having trouble to take off your spacer, just loosen your adjuster and it'll come loose. Your next step will be to loosen your locking bolt and screw your adjusters all the way in so that you can get your chain off your rear wheel. And do the same on the other side. Next, push your tire as far forward as you can and take off your chain. Next, you want to push your axle pin through to the other side. You can use your hand. I prefer using a rubber mallet. Now get, hold your tire up a bit so you can pull it out with ease. Here's your axle pin. Now slowly remove your tire. And make sure you do not damage your brake caliper. Now, this is a great opportunity to clean the back end of your bike. To get rid of all those dust spots that you could not reach earlier. Once you have your wheel on your stand, I just use an old paint bag with water. Take out your seals or your, your spacers. Next, clean the surface of your spacer and the top of your seal ring. Make sure you take your spacer and put it at a location so you know that this is the sprocket side. Now do the same on the other side. Make sure you don't damage your brake. Once you have cleaned your spacers and your bearings, it's time to turn the tire around so that the sprocket is facing downward. This will prevent damage to ourselves. The next step will be to take the air out of the tire. Take your tool and take out the valve stem. 
Go get the air release. Next, you want to loosen your rim lock. Take your 13 millimeter and loosen your rim lock. You do not want to back off your rim lock all the way. You want to make sure you ha have a little bit on so that your rim lock does not fall into the rim. Now give it a push, and the rim lock is loose. Loosen your valve stem. This nut should not be too tight anyway. It may be rusted in a bit and have some dirt underneath, but it should not be too tight. And do not back this off as well. Leave it on so that your valve stem does not fall in. Next, take your three tire irons and your gloves. Wearing gloves will help protect your hands from cuts. Make sure you start from the opposite side of your rim lock. At this step, we'll be breaking the beads. You want to evenly space all tire irons. Make sure they grab the bottom of the tire. Now you want to push all three one by one so that the tire comes over the rim. Unfortunately these tires are very hard, they've been on my bike since 2008 when this bike was made, so it's been a struggle trying to get them off. Your next step is to get your tube out. Once you get your tube out, as you can see, mine's very dirty, so I'm going to do lots of inspection work on the rim. You're going to flip your tire around and do the same thing on the other side. So 
now you want to do this until you're halfway. So once you have it halfway, just about a bit more. So now as you can see, you can shove the tire down there. Like that. And now what people do is they they miss, they make sure they don't hit the rim lock here. And they go underneath it. And then they just push. There you go, there's your rim. So now is a great time to inspect your rim. As you can see, mine's very, very dirty. So it can take me a while to fix up and check everything. So what you can do now is check if your, uh, your, seat, your rubber has holes. If it does, you might want to take it off, put a new one on, or just take, take some duct tape, wrap it around, check your rim lock, see if it's good, if it's broken or anything. This one looks fine, just clean it up a bit. You can also take some, do some care to your rim and really clean it up so it looks great when you have it back on. If you're cleaning your tube, make sure you put your valve stem back in so that there's no water ending up in your tube. Once you're done cleaning, you're going to want to inspect your tire for any edge corners, check your strap. Mine's really damaged, so I'll be putting duct tape around. Make sure you get it centered so that you can easily unroll it and just stick it on. Now you want to massage it a bit so it's nicely glued in. And of course, before you tape it, make sure your holes are lined up from your rubber band so that your valve stem can stick through and your lock, rim lock. Now locate your holes. And poke them through. The toothpick. After you've poked your holes, take your tube if you're reusing your tube, you want to fill it with air and make sure it holds air so that there's no leak. You can also dunk it in water and see if there's air bubbles. If there are air bubbles, that means you have a hole. So you should locate your hole, either fix it or get a new tube. So next, you want to put your rim lock on. And again, don't tighten this all in all the way. Just on the thread top. So now we'll fill the tube with a bit of air. Once you've filled your tube with air, you can now check for holes and you can feel if it loses pressure. Once you've filled your tube with air, it's time to let all the air out again and powder it up. Next, we're going to use our bag to hold the baby powder and we'll be mixing our tube inside this bag so that the baby powder is distributed evenly. Once your tube is baby powdered up, you want to add just enough air so that it will crease on your finger. This will help you when you mount it on your tire. This should be a good amount of crease.
Once that step's done, you want to take your new tire and make sure there's no rocks or dirt inside, which will affect your tube later in the future. I would recommend air pressuring it out. Now it's a good time to check everything, see if it's all good. Today I will be using the MX-11s, they're sand tires, because I mostly ride Sandalee. So they have a direction, some rear tires don't have directions, but make sure you look at the direction so you mount it the correct direction your wheel will spin as you're driving forward. So as you can see, my tires have scoops, so you want to make sure that they scoop the dirt as you're driving forward. Now you want to use soapy water or Windex and you're going to spray your creases around here on both sides so that it's easier to apply the tire. People use Windex so that it dries faster so they can use the tire the same day where soap and water you have longer time before it dries so I'll be using soap and water so I have more time to apply it. Use on both sides. Take your rim. Stick it in. With the first lip on all the way around and this side hanging off. It's time to put your tube in. Now Make sure you locate your hole. Here it is. Now we're going to stick the side in. make sure we're not going to stick it in right away in the hole now we're going to feed our line through I'm going to lube it up again. Can you always just one more quick check to make sure your tube is not twisted and sitting in the rim lock properly. Nice and lubed up. Now we're going to start from the opposite side of the rim lock. Now what I like to do is I like to see everything seated, I like to roll it on the ground, see if get the tube, you know. Get it nice loosened up, like the little kinks, you know. That should be good. Before you add air, you want to make sure that it's all lined up so that when you add your air pressure, it'll beat properly. You want to check each spot. If it's a bit too high here, just push it down a bit. I also use a rubber mallet which helps me shape it. So now you want to put more pressure in, about 20 to 30 psi, so that your beads will seal. And then after that, you're going to be able to back it off and you'll have your air pressure. Feel the air in the tire and your beads pressed against the rim. We're gonna add our little nut around our tube stem. Now you just have to put this on with your fingers 
you don't need to force it on. It should just be there so that it doesn't wiggle or get pushed in. And then we're gonna lock our rim lock so that our tire does not move when we hit certain items on the track. And don't forget your cap and make sure you have one with a rubber gasket, they're the best. They really seal it up. There you go. Now we want to tighten our lock, our rim lock. Get our 13 millimeter or 12 at 13. Make sure there's no tube in the way. Make sure the rim lock is actually in the inside of the tire. Check both sides. Next, we're going to lube our spacers and our bearings. So put on your rubber gloves. Now your second spacer. And make sure you wash, if you get anything on the brake, Make sure you get it off with um, like anti-grease anti or stuff because you don't want the brakes not to work when you ride. Once you have your tire propped up on a brick like me, you can use anything you want. We're gonna grease your pin and we're gonna stick it through and move the brick and we'll stick it through. If your brake pads are too close together because your calipers are forcing them tight together and there's no way you can get your brake disc through, then all you have to do is loosen this cap right here which is your brake fluid and you'll have to bleed your brakes. All that is, is you take your cap out and then you just push on your brake caliper, your pads apart, and you make sure that your fluid does not run out, and then you close your cap again, and then that's how you bleed your brakes. And then once you have your tire on and everything, we'll pump our brake to get the pads back close together onto the brake disc. So now I'll put my rubber gloves on, and we're gonna be greasing our axle. Now this will also help it be accessible if you're in a race and you need to fix something, it'll all come off easy. That should be good. Now I'm going to put it on the other side, the right side. Thank you. Alright. Once you have your wheel on and your chain on, we're going to tension our chain now. And you, to make sure that they're both at the same distance, we're going to put a towel in our chain here. Just drive it backwards so it's tight. Check everything straight. There we go. Now we're going to give this little top to the hammer. Make sure it's in. Now, thank you. now we're going to put our adjuster on. Then our bolt. Keep it loose because we're still going to adjust so that our chain's tight. Now we tighten that up. Nice good feel. Now 
That smell good. And lock that back. That's how you adjust your chain. We'll be doing that on the both sides, and I'll have another video where we'll replace the chain. I'll go through this thoroughly.